good evening. I am uh, Phyllis Logan. I apologize. Running in from somewhere. <laughs> I am your host for the Chicago Westside Branch at AACP. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, last week, uh, we touched on many topics that we knew were of great concern. And then uh, through the week, during the week, uh, we got uh, you know a notice of a few other things that were going on in the city of Chicago. And those are some of the things we want to bring to your attention uh, this evening. Uh, just to go over our last uh, segment, uh, we talked about the Cook County property tax sale that started last week in the uh, in Cook County for homeowners who were past due or in default on their uh, 2015 taxes. Those taxes went on auction on the auction block last week. So you may get notices or you need to follow up with the Cook County Assessor's Office to see if your property taxes were paid. We also talked about a uh, proposal of a state law to roll back a 2014 uh, law, piece of legislation that caused the 2015 taxes to be sold in a, in a sooner than later uh, scenario. So uh, we still have not heard back from our state legislators. Uh, you know who your state legislator is? Please, it's either your state representative or your state senator. You need to ask them about the Senate bill that will roll back uh, and put give them the additional four months for you to pay your property taxes for the previous or past year. So that's on you. That's a charge on you. We are live, interactive. You can give us a call with your questions or comments. 312-738-1060. Feel free to call in. We know you're there. Uh, we're here for you. Uh, we're the NAACP, always looking for ways to empower you, our community stakeholders, you, our listeners, our viewers, uh, and to let you know of information that you may not be privy to on a daily or weekly basis. But that's our goal and objective, is to bring that information to you. So uh, we also talked about the uh, Chicago blighted communities. Uh, we talked about gentrification and home ownership. You know, times are changing. Chicago, Chicago to me, and I've been in the real estate industry for many years. I was not born in Chicago, but raised in Chicago since prior to kindergarten. Chicago is so valuable, and we wonder why we have some blighted communities, but we also don't have the revitalization part that is supposed to happen when buildings get dilapidated, get torn down. Uh, they have to be replaced. And then people will move in and be stakeholders within that community, uh, get to know their neighbors, uh, control the community, uh, reduce the crime, uh, reduce the blight. The reason why we don't have that is because for so many years, uh, so many of us, especially uh, low to very low income families, have had a hard time trying to place yourself into Chicago to call it home. Chicago is very valuable. They talk about Chicago all the time. They talk about Chicago in such negative fashion that what has happened in the past five years, we've lost many, many residents out of Chicago. And what happens when the number of certain segments of people start declining? That gives an opportunity for other people to move in and reclaim a valuable piece of property that, for some reason, we possibly didn't quite understand it was as valuable as what the next person has chosen it to be. So blighted communities, we could say, are by design. Uh, blighted communities bring crime, but it's a responsibility of our legislators to bring in the affordable housing programs to help revitalize our, pro our, our communities. It's up to our legislators, whether they're the local aldermen or the uh, state representative, Cook County Commissioner, it's up to them to come up with ordinances to fund projects to increase the value 
or get rid of the blight within our community. So with that, uh, you know, there was a study that stated, it's called the cost of segregation. I don't want to get into the cost of segregation. I need you to call in and chime in with your thoughts and concerns. 312-738-1060. Give me your thoughts, your opinions on what's going on in your community. But the cost of segregation is uh, was a study done by the Metropolitan uh, Planning uh, Society out of Chicago. Uh, the one thing that I did read, I don't like the study myself. Uh, the study states that uh, because communities are segregated, they fail. That's not true. I'm with the NAACP. We believe that every individual is entitled to, uh, according to the Constitution, uh, prosperity, number one, happiness, number two, and the other things that go along with you surviving. Uh, everyone deserves an opportunity to earn a living, number one, and number two, the economy is better off when everyone participates in it. Yet not everyone in Chicago's region has the same pathway to economic success. And what does that mean? We hear them say the factories are gone, they're moving on, they're gone to other countries, whatever. The factories were doomed to eventually die off in a continuously changing uh, society. We have to step up to today's next technology, whatever it gives us. We need to know what that is. And if jobs are prevalent in technology, that's where we need to be trained at. There's assembly lines for uh, technology as well, if that's where your uh, closest uh, uh, skill sets are. But, you know, for the past 10 years, the city has been giving out free education for higher learning. So we can't blame it on that. Everyone has had an opportunity. And I was just listening to uh, the session uh, before us talking about the Affordable Care Act. You know, every, there's not too much that's free. We all have to contribute. So it, this cost of segregation, they're saying, is because our communities should not all look like whomever resides in the community. I have to defend that because we have Chinatown. <laughs> I mean, it, it may be a mixed community, but I don't know. They call it Chinatown which means that when people relocate from other uh, areas, other communities, other cities and states, they hear that Chinatown, that may be the area that they would follow into if they're of that ethnic group. So we also have Little Village. We have Greek Town. If I had a Greek restaurant, I think I would want to take it to Greek Town to not be in competition, but to give people a little bit more Greek food flavor. So, but if those communities are uh, prospering greatly and they are segregated to that ethnic group, why is there such a barrier when it comes to communities of color? We do have a uh, little village. We have Pilsen. We have communities of ethnic. We have Humboldt Park. Uh, if you go to the North Shore, I mean, people just automatically attack uh, a tag, a price tag to the North Shore because they think that's the elite side of town. But the other communities do describe themselves by an ethnic flair. So how is the cost of segregation the only barrier to communities of color. I, I don't understand that. These are, these are what they are. They are barriers. So this study goes on to say, because our communities, communities of color, are segregated to only be communities of color, that they're failing in prosperity. Uh, give me a call, 312-738-1060. I, I find this stunning. And I also find it unacceptable. You tell me. So, but on with this study, the city of Chicago last week 
Rahm Emanuel, the mayor, came out with a proposal to the Board of Education, the Chicago Board of Education, and what he is proposing or has proposed to the new Board of Education uh, officer, Ms. Jackson, he's proposing uh, a groundbreaking initiative to encourage post-secondary planning and success beyond high school. He's proposing that starting this year, for this initiative to go in effect in 2020, four years from now, less than four years from now, for the class of 2020, so all freshmen right now, he's proposing that students should have a game plan before they can get their diploma. I know some of you all have heard this. He's saying high school graduation is a milestone, not a destination. This is the mayor of the city of Chicago. He says the city of Chicago is proud that CPS students are making record economic academic gains from reading and math achievements uh, to high school graduation and college enrollment. But this plan will ensure that every student has considered the option of what comes after high school graduation. This program he's proposed is called Learn, Plan, and Succeed. What this program states, though, is that if a high school student does not have a plan, whether they are going into the military, whether they are signing up for an apprentice program, whether they've been uh, accepted into college, whether they are uh, going uh, be, have been accepted into a gap year program, uh, whether or not they have a, a current job and they need a letter from their job or an offer from a job, if they don't have a destination before they get their diplomas, your mayor, Mayor Rahm Emanuel, <laughs> is saying that this student should not be allowed a diploma, which means that now... I'm being restricted to how I live my life after I graduate from high school. I'm being defined to say, if I'm not doing any of these things, I'm not good enough for the education that I put into and the hours that I put into to obtain my high school diploma. There's a problem with that. And the families need to pass this information on to the current freshman college, freshman class now to say this is what's in front of you if this is accepted by the Chicago Public School Board. If this is accepted, your child, who's now a freshman, needs to be prepared to either receive a diploma based on a college acceptance letter, a military acceptance or enlistment letter, Acceptance at a job program, uh, maybe a boot camp or something like that. Acceptance into a trade pre-apprenticeship program. Acceptance into a gap year program or a current job or a job offer. If your child who's a freshman this year, according to this new program initiative, that Mayor Rahm Emanuel wants to put in place with the Chicago Board of Education, your freshman student needs to be prepared to say, you'll never get a diploma or needs to be prepared to accept that if they have none of these conditions in place in three, four years, by the year 2020 when they graduate, if none of that's in place, then they've given their time, energy, and effort in learning for what? So parents, you have got to be concerned. 312-738-1060. We got to get our parents involved in what's going on, not only in the city of Chicago, but in the city of Chicago. If this is not a priority, priority to you, uh, then you need to make sure that whatever choices you make, 
you make them fully aware of the consequences. And if we don't get engaged and, and be more forceful about the outcomes of our, our children's future, then something's wrong. Something's wrong with the adults within the city of Chicago. Uh, and, 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 you know, I needed to bring that to you. We're going to have our education chair, uh, Bernard Clay, come to the show in a couple of weeks to talk more on this. But I needed to state uh, what uh, I read uh, last Wednesday in the news after last Tuesday's meeting. There was also a study, uh, and this study was done by uh, one of the black uh, colleges. Uh, this is actually from uh, John Hopkins University. This study found that, and it relates to the education, this study found that black students more, are more likely to graduate if they have at least one black teacher in their life. So, so the, during their educational uh, career, upbringing, if they've had at least one black teacher, uh, that black teacher can be truly instrumental in enhancing and advancing that child's studies and also advancing their life. Uh, the perception is that low-income black students from this study, the probability of dropping out of school is reduced by, this says, 29% if she or he or she has one black teacher in third, fourth, and fifth grade. You know, I was raised up in Chicago. I assure you, going to public school in Chicago on the west side, I had black teachers. I can tell you from my training, my learning, my thought process when I was in uh, grammar school on into high school, I felt that that person in front of me had obtained something some level of education to be in front of me. And if that's what this study is saying, I think that this study is correct. Uh, that if, if we don't put more black teachers in front of our black students at an early age, how can they ever perceive themselves to be in the same position when they get older? Uh, think about it, 312 738 one zero six zero. Uh, this is truly profound, and I think that every other culture, nationality, race of people really delved. They delve down into the studies and try to see how to change the path on which our kids are on. And it is disturbing to say that uh, segregation brings ill uh, to certain communities. It's insulting to say that. Uh, certain communities of one race cannot uh, excel, exceed, prosper the way other communities of one race do. It's an, it's an insult. Uh, but the studies that are being put out there right now are, are only for us to adhere to when they want to change stuff. I've lived on the West Side all of my life, uh, raids on the West Side, and I saw more people that look like me. It did, not, it did not defray me from excelling in life. It depends on the people who are in front of you. So for a study that told me that segregation does ill wills to certain communities, I think that it's wrong, but it's, that's just my opinion, okay? <laughs> the, mere, <coughs> excuse me. the mere fact that a study is out there that says that uh, black students are more likely uh, to graduate if they have at least one black teacher. There's something to that. There is something. When you're in the same room with people teaching you and you, showing you that they've advanced in life and they look like you, there's something to that. Uh, you know, the NAACP, we're all about uh, stopping uh, discrimination. And sometimes these studies can sometimes speak to discrimination, which is why I'm so passionate about these conversations right now. So uh, then I also want to uh, bring up, we did very well this past week uh, with, or actually last Thursday, assisting small business owners or potential entrepreneurs who wanted to take part in the Chicago Thrive Zone or Neighborhood Opportunity Fund. We have another session for them this week to go over the applications. This is an opportunity for a for-profit, a business 
or a nonprofit business. It has to be business in order to get up to $250,000 from a, uh, a grant that the city of Chicago has that's pushing people to establish businesses in certain areas of Chicago. Trying to get away from that, those blighted areas in Chicago, enhance uh, the areas, the communities. Uh, we have a caller. Caller, your question or comment? Yes, we have a comment about the uh, the graduation and the plans after yes. you graduate. I think that's a setback. That's a setback for the young children coming out of high school right now. And, and that's that's pretty much why I wanted to bring it to your attention this evening. It truly is a setback because what it says that, it, it doesn't say that you can live your life like you're golden after you get your high school diploma. It says that if you don't uh, plan or uh, pre-plan to get out of college and have a specific direction to go into, such as the military or a college or, you know, a job or an apprenticeship training program, it says that you're not entitled to a diploma. That's really what it says, and that's a huge setback, which means that we need more adults right now to pay attention to what the future is getting ready to bring for our next generation. They're putting a cap on the, them advancing, no matter what. What if they want to be entrepreneurs? I, you know, Thank if, you. That's yes, correct. Yes. So I appreciate you, caller, uh, coming in. You know, the NACP, we try to bring so much information to you guys, our viewers. Thank you very much. And if you can pass that information on throughout your community, I greatly appreciate it. One more question about joining the double NACP. Uh-huh. Uh, how, how do you join? Do, do you go on the Internet and call and join? Well, I want you. What I do not do not have is my overview. But let me give you our number real quick. Uh, I don't have it on an overview. It's uh, our office number is 773-261-5890. And you can say you heard about um, the membership or you want to join and want information by calling that number and someone will get back to you within uh, 48 hours, okay? All right, thanks so much. You're quite welcome. Thank you. All right, bye. So I've got a couple of more minutes, and what I want to talk about, uh, add to my list, is next uh, next Saturday, I needed to put this up. Uh, this month, the month of April, is Fair Housing Month, and I just wanted to show you guys, uh, Fair Housing uh, is near and dear to my heart. And Fair Housing, the Fair Housing Act would not be possible without, uh, unfortunately, uh, some of the setbacks or uh, negative that's things that happened with Dr. Martin Luther King. The Civil Rights Act uh, that was signed into law in April 1968, properly known as the Fair Housing Act, prohibited discrimination concerning the sale, rental, and financing of housing based on race, religion, national origin, and sex. Intended as a follow-up to the Civil Rights Act of 1964, the bill was the subject of a contentious debate in the Senate, but was passed quickly by the House of Representatives, this is in Congress, in the days after the assassination of the civil rights leader, Martin Luther King Jr. The act stands as the, as the final great legislation achievement of the civil rights era. And April is, is a Fair Housing Month. We have a program on April uh, the 22nd, that's next Saturday, at our address, 5820 West Chicago Avenue. But I need you to call the office. I don't have my overhead. 773-261-5890 so that you could be a part of that program. And I am Phyllis Logan. I want to thank you so much. We'll be back here next week to bring more information to you. We want to thank Can TV because without Can TV, uh, we could not get our voices heard uh, and be spokespersons for you. So we appreciate that. And and please tell a friend, uh, tell a family member. We're on on Tuesdays at 6.30 p.m. And we want to bring more information to inform you of other things that are happening in the city of Chicago uh, that affect you. So I'm Phyllis Logan. Thank you again. And we look to see you next Tuesday. Have a good evening. And happy holiday.